My name is Mordechai Keren Tzvi, Chaber of Neve Ilan, a fairly young kibbutz in Israel. The Jewish National Fund uh, seems to think we're a typical kibbutz, whatever that may be. So they've sent this cameraman way up our rather perpendicular and rocky hill to get what he calls our story. All right. One Jew with a camera can't be much worse than the Arabs who climbed up here not so long ago with tommy guns and then climbed down. So, here goes. We came to Palestine, 40 of us, from occupied France, seven years ago. Right away, the Jewish agency sent us to Gan Eden, paradise, the Ganya, the oldest, most beautiful settlement. This was our mother kibbutz to train us until we could go out and take a desert, a swamp, or a barren mountain and turn it into another Liganya. Sure, the old Haverim told us. You should have seen this place when we started, nearly 40 years ago. Nothing but swamps. And they told us how many died from malaria and from Arab attacks. We looked around us at lovely Liganya and we listened, thinking as everyone thinks, that our troubles had been even worse. We looked at the Ganya and thought how, how we had hungered in the Marquis, how we fought the Nazis with pistols against machine guns. We looked at the Ganya and saw the faces of two of our boys who had frozen to death crossing the Alps to Spain to get to Eretz Israel. We looked around us at the Ganya and we listened to the tales of conquering malarial swamps. Does anyone really understand such things until they happen under your own hands? It was a good life in the Ganya. But, you know, living with even relatives, no matter how much you love them, you want your own place. So we were always writing letters, pestering the JNF. When will we get our own site? Where will it be? When already? A year went by. We were still training and working in the Ganya. You need more Haverim, they told us. Forty is too few. The war ended in Europe. We were still in the Ganya. And near Paris, Hidden Jewish children were gathered into an orphanage. A few came back from Buchenwald. And so on illegal ships they came to us. Another half year. And finally the National Fund told us a place was picked for our French kibbutz. Where? What is it like? Each of us was tense, as though marrying a bride unseen. Where? On the Jerusalem road. That felt good. And a very hard line, but dangerous too in those days. Isolated, a Jewish island among Arab villages, that we knew. And how is it? How is the soil? You will see. We came with that terribly exalted and yet frightened feeling. On October 27, 1946, we saw. We were the key to Jerusalem. And one of you who has been to Israel has felt what we felt when we first saw our place. After a tortuous climb up the narrow, steep, winding road from the Tel Aviv seashore, a dominating peak overlooking the entire coastal plain. Our place. Our home. The first night our tents had blown over. And we slept in the open ruin, feeling like Deganya Chalutzi. What a point they had given us. We were entrusted with the key point in the whole chain of defense. We were the gate to Jerusalem. And the soil? Stones. A mountain of stones. So because it was a mountain of stone, we planted our first tree. And like Jews, we called it Neve Ilan, where trees grow. If a tree can grow in Brooklyn, as you say in America, surely a veteran of the Maquis can grow a tree on a hill of stone. Oh, Mother de Ganya. Swamps, you can drain away, and there is rich soil. But stones. Oh, the Turks who cut down the trees from these hills for firewood. And the Arabs who let the topsoil wash away, and there are goats that had nibbled off every seedling that might have held down the soil. It would take 57 years, our mathematician Eliezer Schwartz calculated, to clear the stones and terrace the hill. At this time, they told us, Neve Ilan had been adopted by the Jewish community of Long Island, which includes Brooklyn, where the three go. And the community wrote us, what did we need? In the beginning, what does every kibbutz need? Houses, water, a road, it goes in your head. Houses, water, a road. So we wrote the Jews of Long Island, save us 55 years of our life. Send us a bulldozer to clear our hill of stones. 
no water. Every drop hauled till you thought you lost more in sweat than the water you hauled up. Still, we planted 26,000 saplings that first year. And the National Fund gave us a stretch of bottom land for barley, corn and hay. It took two hours each way to work that land. And we had only Arab plows. And before we got half started, the war cut us off. Our guards were doubled. Like in the days of the Maquis, we had a tremendous arsenal, brother. A brand gun and two ancient Italian rifles against airplanes. All right, we said. That's why they had to have us here, at the end of the French Marquis. To keep the two Arab armies from joining up in Jerusalem. The Nazis couldn't get us and the Arab Legion won't either. We knew the tactics. Hold up, raid at night, the way the outnumbered Maccabees did on this path to Jerusalem. And that way we got five more rifles. The Arab Legion shelled and mortared us. They hit our water tank. We couldn't get to our nearest neighbor, Ma'ala Hamisha, for water. Cut off four months. We shared a quarter day, 70 miles. The Arab Radio announced that Nebe Ilan had fallen. Newspapers published it all over the world. Nebe Ilan never fell. But the laser Schwarz fell one day. So we made our blood marriage to this hill. The end of the war meant first water. Never again to be without water. We marked our crops to come for a pipeline, a great new tank. And then building, because at last we could bring more people into Israel. We were 40 in the Ganya when we started. We were 70 when we came to our hill. Now we became 120. And to the hard stone we dug the foundation for four concrete houses. Ah, that was a day. When you build with stone, you feel you're really building forever. Each house in a kibbutz usually has four rooms. Two to a room, a couple or bachelors. At the start, we had only built primitive wooden barracks, and not enough. Sometimes couples had to double up, have a room for each. By luck, and a lot of maneuvering, because housing is so desperately short all over Israel, we got an allotment of two prefabs out of a shipment that came from Sweden. These were already luxury dwellings. The old Arab ruin, meanwhile, was built into our dining hall, the center of our kibbutz. We did our own labor, but every bit of material cost us dear. A new roof, loans, interest, payments. The only way we could get our minds off it was at hard work. At last, we were really getting set in our place. We were not the same youngsters that jumped off the truck from the Ganya. Many of us were family people now. We even had our first kids. The Karnis had the glory, but 20 more have been born in Neve Eilat. And like all kibbutzniks, we have big arguments about raising them. You know, there are changes happening in kibbutz life too. The tendency is for more family life. Even for children to live together with their parents, instead of in the nurseries. Right now that would be hard on the children, because we haven't the proper housing for the parents. The place began to look more like people lived in it than just a camp. Our new chaverim were fresh from Paris. Dalia and Moshe were among the last to move to Israel. They brought over some French newspaper. And they were surprised that we even had flowers. Oh, but we were no the Ganya yet. We still didn't even have a road. And then we got a road builder from Long Island. Maybe you never saw what you bought us. Just signed a check. Here it is. You think it is only a machine off an assembly line? To us it would mean a new road at last. To us a bulldozer even meant lettuce and cabbages on a new clear pier. Listen, in the middle of the war a notice came. Your machine has arrived in Haifa Harbor. The Arabs were between us and Haifa. But the bulldozer was in Haifa and Javier Yehuda got to Haifa. The British were in the middle of evacuating. But Yehuda turned the harbor inside out. Here is our notice, where is our bulldozer? Through roadblocks and fire, he brought it back to Neve Ilan. Now some of our fields are swept of rocks, so soft and clean that even the caterpillars grow fat in them. 
and we have to pick caterpillars off our vegetables. And now we have all it. And we can send our produce to Jerusalem. Water, a road, livestock. Forty more cattle added to our twenty-five. And hens. From two thousand, we came up to five thousand. You hear statistics like these in every settlement, and I suppose it's nothing to compare to a New Jersey chicken farm. But we get so crowded, we had to keep the cattle and chickens together. We had to start building a new cattle barn and new chicken runs. More borrowing, more interest payments. But at least by now, we are able to grow our own food on our hill. In the terrible food shortage in Israel, you hear people eat best in kibbutzim. Maybe we are a little better off, especially our kids. But we observe the rations and send every mouthful we can to market. When we load up a truck with milk and produce we raised and send it on the road we built to our Jerusalem, it all still seems a miracle. Our hill of stone will be covered with orchards and vineyards, plum trees and apples and forests of pine. In 1950, we grew 50,000 saplings in the National Fund program. And in 1951, we produced 250,000. Not all are planted here. The JNF uses them in its reforestation programs all over Israel. But we feel good that our trees grow on our hill right from the seed. In a few years, only our rooftops will show above our green hill that once was stone. But for our fertile fields, our grain crops, we still have to travel a long way to work. Someday, our good friends from Long Island will send us a convoy of motorcycles to take us to our distant fields. Like every kibbutz, we have our home industry. We do carpentry. First, we built our own doors, window frames, our furniture to save money. And as furniture is needed everywhere in Israel, we are expanding our shop to do outside work to make money. So we have houses, water, a road, and power. After the bulldozer, the Jewish community of Long Island sent us a generator. Now we have light everywhere at last. Yes, too much of our energy still has to go into the military alert. But you see, we feel we have something to guard here. A hill of stone, but now supporting a great deal of light. Seedlings and half-grown trees, vines and lettuce fields, tomatoes and cabbages, and our sturdy eggplant, cattle and chickens, and a hundred and forty human souls, our children amongst them, new souls who saw the light in Neve Elad. We have new houses, if too few, and a water reservoir, and a powerhouse, and a grave. Even with the generous help we have had from the Jews of Long Island, we are behind, behind. Like every kibbutz, we have so much to build, such great plans to fulfill. Oh, we are still nothing to look at beside Diganya or Merhabia or Kiryat Anavim. But all this we made. We can breathe a little, plan ahead, do things more intelligently. We're managing to find time for culture and recreation. We have quite a good choir and a dramatic group in French. We're sure enough of our Hebrew now, so we're not afraid of losing it if sometimes we speak the other tongue. We have a good library in French and Hebrew, and we even have a poet. Listen. This may not be a poem from the existentialist cafes in Paris, but it is a poem by a French survivor of a concentration camp, and he wrote it in Hebrew, and it is our own. Amiram calls it the coming of new settlers to Neve Ilan. Upon this summit now, lay down your pack. On this bleak hillside, You will feed your flocks on grass, new sprouting in the miraculous track of faith that strikes spring water from the rocks. Stand up right here. The yoke is off your neck. Lift high your head and straighten up your back. That's Nevelan. After five years, no paradise, but home. Okay. 
They're making, they say, a continuing pictorial record of our kibbutz. So maybe uh, I'll have to go through this ordeal again next year. In the meantime, we'll be doing our best to deserve all this attention in the only way we know how. By trying to make Neve Ilan for ourselves and our children and for all who will come to join us a real kibbutz in Israel. <laughs>